A look ahead for January 2022. Astrological highlights and festivals. A very warm welcome to everyone. I'm Swamini Vali, a Palai Center teacher and an Astrovet astrologer. Today, we look at a few of the astrological highlights and festivals during January 2022. The dates I mention are based on North America timings. Dates may be the same or different in other parts of the world, such as Asia. When January begins, the sun is still in Sagittarius, where he remains until mid-January. The environment of Sagittarius is said to be supportive of education and teaching, so the sun's passage through Sagittarius can be an excellent time to learn new material or to share knowledge with others. The light of the sun can make it a good time to reflect with gratitude on all the teachers we have had in our lives and to give us resolve to improve our etiquette with any of our current teachers or mentors. For some people, this will be a time to grow in wisdom, to think with more clarity, or even to accept new responsibilities of leadership or opportunities for new training. Saturday, January 1st, will be New Year's Day when many people celebrate the beginning of a new calendar year. It will also be a new moon. During the daytime period of this new moon, we can honor the contributions of ancestors. Some people may wish to do simple tarpanum practice during daylight hours as taught by Dr. Pillai. Dr. Pillai has said, if there is one technology that will help everyone across the board in an almost guaranteed way if it is done properly and regularly, it is tarpanum. Tarpanum helps our ancestors move into higher planes of light where they can send blessings into the family. Saturday, January 1st, will also be Hanuman's birthday. This annual festival is celebrated during a new moon phase while the moon is in Mula star. Hanuman's birth star. Hanuman is the archetype who rules the planet Saturn. He is an important archetype for anyone who is dealing with challenges from Saturn influences. He can remove fear and worry. He is considered an incarnation of Lord Shiva. He is able to do impossible things. There are several stories about Hanuman's great love for Rama in the great epic, the Ramayana. A simple way to honor Hanuman is to pour water in milk over a statue or yantra of Hanuman. People often offer him a banana and or rice pudding with the sounds Om Hanumate Namaha. Wednesday, January 5th is a fourth waxing moon phase and a great day to invoke Ganesha to remove obstacles with some coconut breaking and a simple chant such as Om Gum Ganeshaya Namaha. The moon will be in Danishta star for much of the day. Danishta is a star of prosperity and music. We can ask Ganesha to bless us with good reputation and support for our aspirations for improved finances and good position. Thursday, January 6th, is observed in some branches of Christianity as Epiphany, a celebration of a visit of three wise men who followed a star to find Jesus after his birth. Some say they were kings, and others say they were Zoroastrian astrologers from the area of Persia. Traditional stories say they offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Friday, January 7th, is a sixth waxing moon. Maruga, a warrior healer archetype, rules the sixth waxing moon. This is an especially effective day to pray to Maruga for protection from enemies, rivals, and evil eye, as well as for help to maintain good health. Dr. Ply has said, if you have the blessings of Maruga, you will get into miracles instantaneously. Quantum sounds to invoke Maruga are Om Marugaya Namaha. 
Wednesday, January 12th, is an Ekadasi, an 11th waxing moon phase. While all 11th moons are an auspicious time to connect with Vishnu for wealth, this is a special Ekadasi called Vaikuntha Ekadasi. Vaikuntha Ekadasi is a particularly auspicious day for receiving Vishnu's prosperity blessings. Each year on this day, Vishnu opens the gateway to his celestial abode, Vaikuntam, a vortex of auspiciousness and abundance. During this time, Vishnu is giving access to tremendous positive energy that can transform our financial mindset. A mantra to invoke the wealth creation aspects of Vishnu is Om Narayanaya Vidmahe Vasu Devaya Dimahi Tano Vishnu Prachodayat. Friday, January 14th, is a day of several significant astrological events. It will be a 13th waxing moon Pradosham day. Pradoshams are a time when we can dissolve negative karmas through the compassion of the divine. The moon will be in Mergashira, a star ruled by Mars, and a star of spiritual enlightenment. This is a favorable time to pray to dissolve all negative self-talk and to become more rooted in kindness in our own self-descriptions. This will be an excellent day to cut limes or lemons do karma removal chants such as tyranny lacantum, and pour milk over a lingam sometime during the hour and a half period before sunset. January 14th is also the day the sun enters Capricorn. Sun in Capricorn has to do with upholding duties and being responsible. The sun's journey through Capricorn may illuminate endurance to accomplish strenuous or burdensome tasks as well as reinforce unshakable resolve. Some people may feel renewed with firm determination toward their goals and experience their sense of purpose being strengthened. They may become more realistic in their approach for realizing their desired manifestations. Some people will be receptive toward accessing talents and interests that they previously had not paid attention to. The sun in Capricorn may kindle power in various mass movements. The sun's entrance into Capricorn is also celebrated as Vedic winter solstice. From the time the sun enters Capricorn in January until he enters Cancer in July is a six month period in which it is very favorable to bring projects out into the world that we want to have lasting results. January 14th is also Thai Pongal, a harvest festival of South India, particularly celebrated in the Tamil community. It is traditionally an occasion for decorating rice powder based kolam artworks, offering prayers in the home, temples, getting together with family and friends, and exchanging gifts to renew social bonds of solidarity. In addition, on January 14th, Mercury turns retrograde in Capricorn. Mercury in Capricorn supports an analytical or systemic approach to thinking. This can be a good time for hearing from or reading the writings of an enlightened person. Sunday, January 16th is a full moon. The moon will be in Purnavasu, a star of material prosperity. Every full moon is always a good day for some Shreemrizi chanting and energizing our goals for material plane manifestations. Also on Sunday, January 16th, Mars enters Sagittarius. Mars in Sagittarius has to do with jumping on opportunities and expansion. It can be a good time to take some action for learning new things, such as doing a training course, or doing self-study via books or YouTube videos, etc. This is a favorable period to plant trees, if weather permits in the local area, or donating to groups who are doing reforestation projects. 
Monday, January 17th, is Thai Pusam. Thai Pusam is a festival that commemorates the occasion when Parvati gave Maruga a veil, a spear, so that he could vanquish an evil demon. Dr. Palai has said, the star called Pushya, Pusam, is a very important star because it is on this star that Lord Shiva came to this earth plane. And it is also the day that Swami Ramalingam turned his body into light and disappeared, and is also a star that is sacred for Maruga, who is the Pleiadian god for enlightenment and the third eye. A simple practice on Taipusam is to pour milk over a vow and chant Ser Ra Va Na Va Va. Many people will also chant Arut Parun Jyoti as these were the sounds from Shiva that turned Swami Ramalingam's body into light. Monday, January 17th is also Martin Luther King Day. This is a USA holiday to celebrate how Christian minister Martin Luther King Jr. promoted equal rights for all Americans, regardless of their background, during the civil rights struggle in the 20th century. He was a true leader for nonviolence and provided inspiration for many. He taught love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Friday, January 21st is a fourth waning moon phase and a great day to invoke Ganesha to remove obstacles with some coconut breaking and a simple chant such as Om Gum Ganeshaya Namaha. Sunday, January 23rd, is a sixth waning moon phase and a good day to invoke Maruga for protection and blessings with a simple chant such as Om Marugaya Namaha. Thursday, January 27th, will be an Ekadasi, an 11th waning moon phase. All 11th moons are an auspicious time to connect with Vishnu for wealth. Ekadasi is a very good time to remain open and alert and to ask for financial blessings and abundance. We can use the wealth creation mantra given earlier. Saturday, January 29th, will be a 13th waning moon and a sunny pradosham. All pradoshams are a time when we can dissolve negative karmas through the compassion of the divine. When a pradosham falls on a Saturday, a day ruled by Saturn, a planet who activates some of our karmic lessons, it is known as Sani Pradosham. This can be an extra strong day to cut limes or lemons, do karma removal chants such as Tyranny Lacantum, and pour milk over a lingam sometime during the hour and a half period before sunset in our local area. Also on Saturday, January 29th, Venus goes direct in Sagittarius. Venus in Sagittarius can bring about expansion when it comes to love. This is a time to enjoy good clothing, food, and our surroundings. Some people may need to take care not to be overly indulgent. Monday, January 31st, is a special new moon called Thai Amavasya. This is the first new moon that occurs after the sun has moved into the zodiac sign of Capricorn. While every new moon is a good time to remember our ancestors and to do prayers to help them move into higher planes of light, Thai Amavasya is one of the three special new moons each year when we really want to make extra effort to honor our ancestors as our prayers will be amplified. Dr. Pillai has explained we have spiritual genes, not just physical genes, which we inherit from our ancestors. Genes are the blueprint of our life. And Dr. Pillai has said, changing our genes is of utmost importance for all of us to have a new life. How do we change our genes? By changing the consciousness that backs it up. Where does this consciousness come from? From our ancestors on both parents' side. Our ancestors gave us this consciousness 
and this consciousness is behind our genes. These dead ancestors remaining only in their disembodied consciousness can help us. As consciousness, they can interact with the consciousness of our genes. This is what is being done in the ritual called Tarpanum. Tarpanum is a feeding ceremony for the souls of the ancestors. These souls visit their descendants in the body for help. Their souls need to be fed in order for them to move up into higher planes of light. Participating in Tarpanum rituals during Thai Amavasya can exponentially increase blessings from our ancestors and accelerate positive transformation of our own spiritual DNA. Please let us know in the comments if this kind of monthly overview video is helpful. Please press the like button and subscribe to the Pillai Center Practice Channel. The entire Pillai Center team is wishing you well.